Christians who made a difference. Today we are looking at the life and contribution of a chaplain of early colonial New South Wales, who was a powerful force for good in the early days of the colony, despite opposition from those with vested interests in the corrupt practices of the day. He also took the Christian gospel message to New Zealand with outstanding success. His name is the Reverend Samuel Marsden. Samuel Marsden was born in Yorkshire, England in 1764, the son of Thomas Marsden, a blacksmith. Well known locally as a lay preacher, Samuel was noticed by the Ellen Society of the Church of England. This society sponsored promising but ill-connected youths to train for Christian ministry. In 1790, they sponsored Marsden to study to be a minister of religion at Magdalene College, Cambridge. When the need for an assistant chaplain in the colony of New South Wales arose, Marsden cut short his theological studies to take up this position. He was encouraged by the English reformer William Wilberforce to do so. Samuel was ordained as a deacon in March 1793 and then as a priest in May before sailing for Sydney in July that year at the age of 28. He took with him Elizabeth, his wife of three months, and their first child was born toward the end of the voyage as they sailed past Van Diemen's Land. They arrived in March 1794. Marsden was assistant chaplain to Richard Johnson, the first and senior chaplain of the colony. Marsden became the first rector of St John's Church in Parramatta and served in this role from its opening in 1803 until his death in 1838. He baptised, married and buried thousands. He started new parishes and built new churches. Marsden also established an orphanage and school in Sydney in 1801. He tried to care for the Aborigines around Sydney and to bring the gospel to them. He encouraged merchants and traders, helping turn Sydney from a prison to a city. He served on boards of schools, hospitals and orphanages. Marsden was a man of strong personality and deep religious conviction. The corruption and degeneracy of the settlement was a great trial to him. He stood out against the rum trade that had corrupted the colony. His opposition to the immoral leaders of the community created many powerful enemies. He knew that the only hope for moral improvement was through the mercy and power of God. So he preached that people needed to repent and follow God's ways. But he didn't just preach. He also worked to overcome problems in the young colony. He was actively involved in every part of early colonial life. For some time, at Governor Macquarie's request, he served as the local magistrate. His reputation for severity as a magistrate earned him the title of the flogging parson. But it was expected of Marsden that he would hand down the sentences stipulated by the governor for various crimes. They were, from our modern day perspective, brutal times when punishments were routinely harsh. This meant that Marsden was blamed for harshness when he had no options. When he sought to relinquish the role, Macquarie threatened to send him home to England. His involvement in the justice system gave his powerful enemies, who did not like his moral improvement efforts, opportunity for criticism. These criticisms have been recycled down the years and have prejudiced some against this man. Marsden had a significant involvement in farming in New South Wales. In 1803 to 1805, he made several reports to Governor King and Sir Joseph Banks on the prospect of sheep breeding and wool growing. He was described by Joseph Banks as the best practical farmer in the colony. He initiated the colony's wool trade and sent the first commercial wool cargo back to England. Alongside all his work in Sydney, he can best be remembered as a missionary known as the Apostle to New Zealand. He used some of the profits he made from farming to finance missionary trips to New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. He returned to England to recruit missionaries and then sent them to the Pacific Islands from Tahiti to New Zealand. He bought and maintained ships to transport his missionary friends. Marsden himself took the risky trip across the Tasman to preach the Christian message. On Christmas Day in 1814, he was the first man to conduct a Christian service and sermon on New Zealand's soil. He travelled there six more times. Thousands and thousands responded to his missions and became Christians. 
When, as an old man, Marsden made his last visit to New Zealand, crowds came out in great numbers just to sit on the ground and see the revered Apostle to New Zealand. Samuel Marsden died at Parramatta in 1838, aged 73. We honour Samuel Marsden, the second Christian chaplain in Australia, for his great influence for good and his work in spreading Christianity through New Zealand and the Pacific region. Christians